Hey everybody, Day Trader Rockstar here. Market update, uh, review of today, and going forward, some setups for tomorrow. I'm going to try to make these timely and very quick, you know, because I tend to go off and we talk a lot of, a lot of stuff, a lot of education and stuff. But these videos I want to try to get out faster in the evening, kind of just concentrate on what's moving and everything. So a couple of thoughts. CPIs tomorrow, everyone and their grandmothers trying to figure out what the market's going to do after that kind of gave up on seeing the uh, the schizophrenic market today which was all over the place and finally rallying at the end of the day um, very hard you know it's gonna be no no one knows and basically they're gonna um, you know we're gonna see after the fact so if you're taking a position in front of that understand it's probably a gamble there might be a reversal at one point meaning we might have a, a you know a move an initial move and then a reversal and an opposite move uh, that a lot of people this is very transparent now so this is always you know very very everyone everyone's playing uh, you know armchair quarterback here and trying to figure out you know what a good number would be would it would it be better for them to cut back be more hawk or be continue to be more hawkish or um, you know and it's just there's every way you could look at it so I'm not even going to go into it we're going to try to you know catch catch some moves the real um, the real great thing about short-term trading is you don't have to you know we like these events because it's going to cause the volatility to come in and then we can actually pick our spots so I think that's the best thing and being in front of it is a little bit more difficult but once it's done and we kind of get a groove for what the market's doing it's gonna be very easy to pick off the market uh, especially if we're showing strength or good with uh, good weakness any type of trending market is very easy to trade we buy the pullbacks on divergences you sell the pops on divergences depending on which way you're going the flags come out real clean today was just a chop fest before the market open and i mean going the whole day before the cpi report tomorrow so 8 30 that is i'll be in early again tomorrow and we had a good trade this morning the um uh, i don't know that let me where is it the uh let me see if i can pull it up you know what i'll probably pause these so i don't have to waste the time all right, so the key was on this, we got in early. <clears throat> I got in at 6.30 on the dock, and I do a scan real fast of pre-market movers, things that are showing strength. Now, this was a good price. It was showing a little volume coming in. I was watching it out of the corner of my eye. Um, I liked the way you know it, it looked. So I decided to take a shot, and I got in right under, right around $10. $10, right when the volume started to come into it. So I, we were able to catch the volume early. I liked the price. Everything about it looks looks pretty good and um, picked up a hundred shares and felt really good about this I mean we look back when you get a stock like this you kind of look back at the history of the stock to see the the highs the lows how it reacts to news um, and you know that's all part of the happening at uh, live and I try to do that on the radio as much as I can but usually you have to make very fast decisions and this is uh, you know this is probably the high high stress area of the markets so you could actually see the over daily chart was pretty bullish overall and it had some news and what and the news played a big part too there was some so there was some good news on COPD uh, treatments and um, how to hate the top line results so it was really good and then you had some reaches up here back in the chart and I, I look back where it did pop up to 25 and anything above that 25 and it traded there for a while and it traded this level this looked really good kind of a breakout so we took a shot on that uh, pre, as you can see, the pre-market <coughs> um, got in here at about right at ten dollars, and happened to uh, put an order in at thirteen. I got thirteen. I took half off, and turned away for a second. It was at fourteen dollars, and I took the other fourteen. I took the other fifty off, and that was that. And I got you know very close to the highs of the day. Market ended up coming back down, and probably around to, what was around eleven dollars. I got back in seeing if we got a bounce we didn't get a bounce let have the 100 shares uh, I'll see what I'm gonna do with it tomorrow but the pre-market is where we get these big moves and <laughs> there was there's always a few that are playing out and to be on top of them you have to be in there early and the consolidation leading up to that seven o'clock pop an eight o'clock pop and then sometimes a 930 even pop but in this case at 930 we I was already out but I'm telling people to come in. They tell me, hey, John, look at this one. It's running. I said, yeah, I know. It's here at 630. I'm in it already. And I said, why aren't you in it? Why aren't you here at 630? It's too early. Well, 
that's a decision everyone has to make. Is it, too, it is too early. It's too early for me too. But I know that's where the opportunities are and we make good money at that time. Today was a hell of a day trading the uh, futures. We're going to switch over to that in a second. But that was the highlight of the day. Um, ended up going long a call going into this CPI report. We'll see if it works out. It's kind of just a gamble. Um, I bought a call going into it. I'm up on it right now, so if we could somehow just kind of get a pop tomorrow. But it's all going to come out at 8.30 and won't be able to do anything with your options until after that. So a lot of people, you know, I know a lot of people in the room taking big positions for a spy pop. So if that goes against them, you know, it's not going to be a very good day. It's a very tough call, you know, to step in front of this. What's a nice thing about this is that we could go back, and I want to show you the uh, ES right now, the MES. And I was doing my best trying to trade in that and until I realized we had a very, you know, bipolar market today. It was up and down and, and very choppy, and it felt like it was going nowhere, uh, but just dragging. And um, at the end of the day, we got that pop. And I'll, I'll, go, over it for you. I'll go over it with you. And uh, just let me bring up my chart here. <laughs> I have to pause this again. All right, here's the. This is a chart I use um, when I'm trading. This is my Ninja chart connected to my IB, and I just place the trades on there manually. There's a buy, and, um, buy market, sell market, or limit price, anything like that. It's a pretty good platform. I use it. I like using it for the MES. So this is a chart that's it's going. I'm just going into it. I want to see, you know kind of look at the divergences on the day and see if there was any. Um, it kind of explained where they are and it, and you tell me if there's been good moves off of them and I'll show you my mistakes today too but then I had a couple mistakes I missed one important divergence so here we had a, a divergence you can see this right so you have the low and the higher low and, and, and again you have to decide if that higher low is going to be above that 20 line the higher the better of that secondary line this is definitely lower than that previous line it does qualify for a divergence and you have the reversal candle here that is that is really good too that kind of puts it up to a two star divergence and you got the fast rotation which gave you a big pop up to the two and you would probably end up taking that off if if, if i was you know there um because you could see what happened the market came right back down and picked up any stops that might have been in here off of this it almost seems to be able to read the divergence setups now and that because a lot of people might be trading them or understand the concept behind it the market is now coming back and taking out potential stops where these are you know key areas these pivot areas and when the market pops unless you're out and you're coming back and you have a, a standing stop here look where the market comes down grabs it for a second and then off to the races and you got to believe that's happening you got to believe that's happening. I mean, there were, there's enough technology out there to be able to read orders and, and know things. And, and I have bots running on my, my machine to identify these levels and these trades. So it's much more advanced stuff out there. And if your market, if your order is out there on, on, the, on some platform, standing order, believe me, they're going to be able to see it. So always, always expect the unexpected. The, um, the move up then after that, I'm just kind of riding. This. I wasn't here at 4 o'clock in the morning. I, would have, I wouldn't have taken any of these trades. Here was a divergence here, and a pretty clean one. But again, you could see that the weakness was there. These divergences, and this was a 14.3 and a, a, a 9.3. Both a pretty decent divergence with an oversold level here, but was kind of flatlined. And what I'm looking at here is that this low and this low right here it's a slight little lower low and you had a decent move and what I what I require or what I suggest is to take it off on your rotation so when you get above the 80 that's a warning sign especially in a market that's kind of weak anytime you get above that 80 sign you should be taking your trade off if it gave you two points or two ticks take it off don't have that monetary goal out there I want to get, you know, or how many I want to get two points out of. If the market rotates fast, momentum gets gets overbought or oversold, and we start to shift, you're not going to have, to, you know, it's just going to come back, and then you're going to be underwater a little, and you say, oh, let me hold it, you know, and that's just when trouble starts. So concrete rule, concrete rule. You get a divergence. Um, your first profit should be taken off on the first rotation. Then you move to your stop up to break even, and then if you want or manage your stop, you can keep your stop whatever you want to do. But 
you know, kind of a more automated playing with their house money now that you've already taken profits. You move up to break even. You're not risking anything. You're already you're already locked up, locked in a profit. So that's why I always say break even. But lots of times, again, market will come back down and take that break even stop. So you got to analyze it as on the go. That's what I do. Um, you know, and to tell you where the bigger time frames are, where the, the overall thing. And this is pre-market too. So here we go. I just got in this morning. Took my first trade. It was trying to find divergences for you, trying to do the stocks, and we did. We had this little candle here, this this red candle. Um, it was close, and I was watching. I said, "Oh, look, a kind of a hidden divergence." It's relatively speaking, it's a more advanced divergence. And I took it off right. I listened to myself, and I said, "Oh, I'm above 80. I'll take it off." And look at that, a perfect, perfect exit. Then we had a. Um, I had a nice candlestick here. I think this might have been a three-minute divergence. This was at 8 to 10. I took an entry there and I got out real fast. <laughs> I think it because it, it got oversold real fast, but it did move higher. And I was only going with one contract. I had, had so much going on that it was very hard for me to concentrate on these. So I tend to just get in one or two or three contracts. <coughs> so, But that would have been a much, you know, probably a better gain on that. And that would have actually worked good for your profit and break even. Your break even would never have gone gotten hit, and you probably got have gotten it up to about here. So that would have been a good trade. All right. So after that, we came up to the open, and the open, of course, is always a volatile area. But the open also gives us a lot of a lot of divergences. So the open came around, and you could see the market. See right at 9:30, right about here. Market dropped a little, then reversed, and kind of chopped around and pushed up here, and then dropped off really hard. And it was kind of hard to to see that it was, you know, there was no real divergence. There was actually a divergence if you look at it uh, from this high right here. So officially, there was a divergence, which that's pretty cool to real see that now. From here, you know, it was even kind of a double top but I would even just look at, the, at that that way and then uh, wait and you know what no cancel that cancel that that wasn't a divergence that was not a divergence I'm actually looking at um, my mind is backwards here I was looking at the closing tops here and it was kind of um, that lower it was close it wasn't oh there it is no there it is so you had that lower high right there underneath the 80 and that spike higher here. It was a slight divergence, very hard to read. I didn't read it really at the time. I waited for the market to come down and we started seeing the chop around here. So I figured something was going to set up. And when I started to see things like that set up around 9, 10, 10 o'clock, you look for a divergence. And sure enough, one came out for us. So a nice divergence right there. And... Uh, even it was on the 14th trade, I mentioned that, even got a fast pop, wasn't, you know, took it off fast. I don't even know if I made anything on it, I probably got a break even because I, I think I got in late on this and then I wasn't, um, I wasn't focused, I, said I took it off at the break even. But you can see it moved up a little bit further and then came back down and then slowly moved up. And overall the divergence here, which is absolutely a, a big divergence here because you could see it, it's a mathematical invisible divergence did give you a move up and never came back and took out the lows so you had a successful trade setup here but I didn't I was unsure of it I think I kind of bailed early on it thinking it was going to come back because I felt I was chasing on this candle but it would have been okay um, same thing here I started getting a little whippy so looked for the um, I was looking for something here, uh, maybe a bull flag on the 20 or no, right after the 20. And for some reason, I got out of here. It would have actually kind of just looked weak. I just didn't feel comfortable with any of these, any of these. So I took less than a point, two point uh, stops on these, and I just didn't. I was looking at this as a pullback, and nothing really came. So it was three trades. And I said, you know what? This is uh, it's not going to uh, be something I'm looking for. I said I want to wait for the divergences. I, I think what I was looking here for is a flag originally, or push back up, and then um, 
that might have been a little divergence here that might have failed this low and this low over here and this higher low and that's probably why I got into this one and it got a little pop um, and I took it off <clears throat> just wasn't uh, doing anything and then same thing here this was kind of weak I don't know why I even looked at this one um, might have been that little dip up here it looked like a bigger steeper divergence happening and then I saw it no but curled back down so I got out so I was pushing for those divergences, but they really weren't there. <clears throat> Same thing here. We're looking at a bull flag. But, uh, you know, we were borderline, holding above the 80, getting oversold. Started to move up, took it, and then it came back down. I got out. I said, you know what, that's not going to... Just before, you know, thank God I got out. Because uh, it did drop hard here. Then we got another... Then we had a real nice divergence. And the divergence here was textbook it was a very steep divergence much higher above that 20 line decent candle reversal candle it was also 14 3 and we had the time frame the 60 10 on our side <coughs> so saw the divergence I said you know what <coughs> feel pretty good we're gonna hold on to this a bit and I um, I held on to it for longer than I normally do we got a nice seven points on that I think seven seven points <coughs> And then um, it looked like another flag, but it broke through. And I said, you know what, that's it. I'm not going to um, mess around with it anymore, especially the flags. The divergences worked great. Sometimes you got to make sure the trend is your friend when you're dealing with a flag. And I realized that. So. so this is where we are right now. Markets opened up here. We kind of drifted. Again, CPI tomorrow going into this. It's going to be kind of a, a, a crazy morning. Ooh, looking back here, I didn't even notice this. But this was right at... Oh, I didn't take this one. That was a nice divergence here. And I think I mentioned it on the, on the show. And I, I mentioned I missed it. But you see that double bottom there? Look at, the, 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 look at that. That's another, that's another two-star two divergence. Um, very nice. And look at that rip. It just ripped right back up. And again, look at you know it didn't come down all the way to the the lower candles, but came pretty close. And it ripped back up, and you can see how whippy it was. But you know there was opportun opportunities here. I missed this one. I remember to see it missing that one. I didn't miss the others though. But I took some wasted trades looking at flags that weren't there. Um, but I think that's it. I mean, probably even an argument for divergence here on the five. The three I didn't even look at the three minute but there was probably three minute divergences all throughout the day let me run that right now actually let's take a look what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on a three minute time frame so much for the so much for the under 10 minute video damn it Johnny you gotta, all right uh, um, yeah you always sometimes you gotta look at your three minute time frame because your three minute time frame my entries are really good on the three minute some of them didn't make you know sense especially when I was looking for those flags but Usually on the bottom here, they're, they're big moves. And the three minutes are just starting to go up. So you get a good rotation on these three minutes. You can make some nice little profits. So what I'm going to do here is <clears throat> I'm going to put the scanner on. This is the RockBot and what I have running on the, what I have running on the RockBot channel. And you're able to have this script if with your lifetime membership. I always want to say that. But this is a good script to run on the Ninja Trader. Now you can set your parameters and stuff. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it on so it recognizes our divergences. I want to see. <coughs> Let's see if anything comes up if I put it on my live account. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna look for one, but we'll see. I wonder if they're gonna backfill them. Let's see what happens here. So the old, <clears throat> that's like calculating up here. All right, there they are. So this is today's action. This is the, on the rock bot. These are the trades it took. Beautiful, right there. Nice move up, trailing stop all the way to the top beautiful right here you can see there's a couple trades here all the way to second profit that means it hit all targets beautiful divergence here big steep divergence there right back up second profit profit hit 
the trial and stop came in. Same, look at this one. Oh, I'm going off the screen here. <coughs> the only one that looks like this one failed here, there was a trailing stop that tried to get a little bounce but got stopped out. But everything else here, this one right before that, nice one, second profit, and then trailing stop, and you're out. And that goes all the way from the morning. So the whole day today, <coughs> Looking at the overnight trades too. Why not? <coughs> and let's try something else here. If we had this running on autopilot today, give me a second here. All right, I'm bringing up the strategy analyzer from the Ninja Trader. And what I could do, do I could put in any of. Um, let's see where it is. If it does pop up here, sometimes it, the Ninja Trader kind of stalls on me if I have too many windows open and stuff might be the time right now right when I need it the most trade analyze strategy analyzer hmm. there it is all right sorry if you can't read the font or anything all right so that's gonna put my five I'm gonna put it on my five minute default divergence <coughs> Well, say we were trading, um, just to give you uh, a real life example, we'll do the MES, that's typically what I do. Put that contract size on there. And we'll trade on the three minute time frame. I think that's what I was doing, right? Yeah, three minute. I've been telling you for the last month, the three minutes has been where it's at. What is today? August 9th. All right, I want to use uh, trading hour. This is probably going to overnight also, so it's probably going to take some trades overnight, which might mess up things. But I'll leave everything else here, the parameters and everything running. Um, this is what I have running on the bot right now, and we'll see what happens. Oh, and it's also running a five lot. All right, so this if you had five lots running. Let's see. And now it's running through all the, uh, it's back filling and back testing all the areas here. So <coughs> there it is. So total number of trades, 30 trades, 83% successful, 25 winning trades, five losing trades, 30 trades, 25 and five. All right. And then they have the rest of the information on there. Um, So not bad. I mean, that's just running the buy side uh, three minute divergence. I keep on stressing the importance of that and how that is. So there was five trades. Uh, we could look on here. I think we can pull this down and see the progression. If you have this, we'll go to the chart here and then I'll input these trades in there. No, those are textbook perfect. And what I would suggest, and I don't suggest letting this run overnight because you get into a trending market, it could take a, a series of down, you know, like here, it, you know, like today it looked like it was it was doing that on the one minute time frame. Three minute was fine. I only had one kind of fail here, and that dropped out. And I, I was actually in this trade, and I got out right before it dropped. Well, actually, that's seven o'clock, seven thirty. It might not. That was a different one. Look at that one. Wow. So, I mean, it, it's, there's no doubt you're in the right zone. You're in the right area when you're dealing with that. It's great to have it running, have it and get you in a trade. It automatically doesn't think twice. It doesn't second guess. It doesn't, you know, have any fear or greed or anything like that. It'll take it. If you see the divergence, take it. Then manage it yourself. It'll put in the stop. They'll put in a trailing stop, you know, but I would manage what the conditions are at that time. You know, um, I'm going to turn this off or else I'll be taking trades all night. Let's see what we can apply. 
here. It's like a, a like a Bigfoot sighting here. We got live action. We have a, a divergence that just triggered on the Rockbot. Three minute divergence. It's on the other ch it's on the other screen, but you can't so you can't really see it. I'm actually setting mine up to trade tonight. Just gonna put it on one contract and and um, take six ticks profit on each trade and see how many trades it takes. And uh, I'd feel comfortable with that. Just to uh, just to play around with it. Stop loss. We're going to trail and stop is eight. So what I have it set on is take profits right after six ticks and move the stop up. So it just locks it in. Now Orlando, it doesn't have anything that you could set the time for, but you could trade different. Well, no, there's nothing on that, but I don't know if there's anything on on the platform that you could add to it. I don't know if there's add-on indicators. Uh, that helped you know do the timing for you. I don't know if it's. It pro I think you can program it on that um, in the script. You can, but it would it would take uh, you know some programming. All right, what am I looking at here? So that was a five minute divergence long. So currently it's in a trade. Yeah, currently it's in a trade. As we pushed it on the rock bot, you could see that. Now I'm just going back. I thought I was on the other ch channel. All right, so and the other thing I wanted to show you that um, that's 3340. Is how well the tradeometer did today. Now, the tradeometer is the other indicator comes with the few called the futures pack tradeometer and the um, and the rock bot and the tradeometer is definitely worth to having running in the background because take a look at it today and I didn't pay attention to it too much today if it I would, if I would have paid attention to it I think I probably would have not gotten into some of the trades um, let me I have to bring it up on the screen here we go Well, that's not it. That's it. All right. Um, look at these. Look at the. Look at this. And again, this represents multiple time frames rotating. All right, and all lining up at the same time. So it's kind of uh, you know, and it's a great indicator for overbought and oversold levels. I, I, I combine them with the tradeometer. If you, you know, if you had these signals on the tradeometer and on these, we call those super signals. You don't trade these green to red or red to green. You just, these are entries. And from that point on, you're looking for the, the bias to be in that direction. Buy side, buy side, buy signal, sell signal, sell signal, sell signal. Your job is now to, you know, take that information, edit, you know, al analyze the trend see what you think uh, you know other things are going to hold up how fast you want to take profits but these will be the best you know mathematically sound multiple time frame rotations that are all uh, all lined up perfectly and that's what you know typically comes now if you have a aggressive an aggressive market one will get stopped out you know you'll start to blow through that you won't see a pullback and then that's will actually the Tradeometer will kind of go into lockdown phase and wait until the market to pull back so it resets and wait for it to get back into a rhythm. So anything that you know is a, a real aggressive trend, um, you know, you have to be careful of those breakouts, news. You know, you have to know what tools you're using and why you're using them and when you use. These are great in choppy markets like today. Today was a great example of how well this could identify these ch this chop. So at this point in the video, we'll go talk about the setups for tomorrow.
in the room here. Orlando mentioned AEMD, which is set up for tomorrow. They had some news after the close. I believe they had earnings, and they had some good news on um, a drug that they were... Uh, oh, I think it's a monkeypox um, treatment. And they had some news on that. AEMD. You can see it. And then it kind of settled back in, but I got in. I said, all right, this is pretty good. It's after hours. Tomorrow it'll pick up. There's been a lot of talk at the monkeypox. A lot of, uh, you know, starting to hear some news that uh, supplies are getting short. Uh, there is um, some things coming out of England. There's that one company that supplies the vaccine. And there's a lot of companies jockeying for position for treatment. And this is one of them. And they have a, a package they're going to submit to the FDA that uh, for their treatment package. So that was the news. And they came to their earnings came in better than expected also. So it uh, looked interesting, you know. As they say... In the game of life, you got to be in it to win it. <sighs> Hopefully, it pops in the morning. But again, it's going to be a short-term mover. You know, possibly a good popper tomorrow. Let's take a look at the daily and see if we can project maybe. <clears throat> I think that's enough good news here. We, we can maybe even get up here to that two above two dollars again. You know, we start to move up here. Why not? You know, I have to see. You know, this thing could actually take off. It has some history back here. The big gap up to twelve dollars. The consolidation here for a while. So it, it does look pretty good. I like it for tomorrow. It'll be on our list for uh, pre-market movers. We have some earnings after the close. Uh, coin here is down to eighty-three after hours. You can see a lot of these on us, um, partly on the screen here. I'll move it over for you. <laughs> we had NVIDIA, a little bounce in the video at the end of the day. We actually called a nice low there. That's going to be interesting for tomorrow. Unity also had some earnings out. And it's, you know, it's not bad. It didn't, get, it didn't get destroyed. So there is possibilities of some bounces, some short squeezes in, in all these tomorrow. So Unity, Win Resorts, the same thing. You know, we got a, a drift down here to 63 just something to keep an eye on in the AEMD. And then, you know what? There's, there's a few IPOs here that were running big and have come down. Um, you know, this one was at $200. <laughs> back down to $15. You know, who knows where these, these might end up. They're very active, so, you know, be very careful with those. I don't even, I don't even like messing around with those. They're just, um, you know, it's hit and miss on, wh on which way they're going. But if you get the momentum on the right direction, you can make a lot. The um, there is a few that I think it are setting up here on the cheap ones, and the object here is either be here early, catch it early, or be in it before the news comes out. Now, I'm not saying there's news due here, but let me move this over. There's been a lot of IPOs that have recently exploded, so we have a list of IPOs going out, and I think that's probably the most important information. Um, going out tonight on this video is to keep an eye on these stocks. Thanks to Racer bringing them to my attention in the chat room. Well, I'd like to get into before the move, if there's a base here. I started picking up NU here down today, but uh, you could you could definitely see an area of resistance which we're having a hard time closing above. So that you have to look at that, that 468 area. Set that alert here, because that's going to be the real breakout on this. I'm just going to set up another alert on that for us. <coughs> the, the pullback today on some volume, a little concerning. We'll see where, where this thing goes. It's not a big position at all, but it is something that I just started. So you can actually see the nice pullback. It dropped off, consolidated. Well, that really did drop hard, huh? Maybe there might have been earnings on this. I don't even know. I didn't even check it. The Warren Buffett paid about nine dollars <throat> for his one billion dollar stake. So we'll, we'll watch this. You know, continue to watch it. Maybe Warren maybe dumps his stake. I hate that to happen. <coughs> or was he going to announce he doubled down? He might even announce that. I mean, if he paid the nine, up to nine dollars to for his one stake, and you know, what a place to uh, get back in, or at least double down, 
bring that cost average, you'll be right back in the money on the pop to seven. <coughs> um, another one here, another end stock is NA, Nano Labs. This is a recent IPO. IPO. When we were talking about the IPOs, not to get sidetracked from it. Let me actually finish up. I wanted to make this much shorter video, but the new IPOs are something to watch because these things usually explode. And the examples that we were talking about before uh, that explode is the ME, MEGL IPO, like at fifty dollars, popped all the way up to two hundred and something dollars, then back down to fifteen dollars. Not for the weak of heart. Um, MG AM. IPO like four dollars and change, four dollars and fifty cents, went all the way up to twenty, all the way back down to four dollars and fifty cents. MGAM. So, um, MOBV. I mean, this one took off today. Could could it follow through tomorrow? Definitely would watch this one. MOBVU. Still in units. All right. These are the potential movers. I like this brush here. I'm in the brush. Two or three, four, five day consolidation. Does it break down and then break higher? Does it just break higher and then break down like Nano did? But it's getting tighter and tighter. Maybe tomorrow's the day. We break through three. We get to four. Who knows? Who knows? It could even break down. But these are the stocks where there's going to be some action. And um, there's some new IPOs coming on. I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to, um, you know what? I'm just going to write them down for you because they're not public yet, and they won't have charts yet. Let's see if I can do this for you. All right. So anyway, I want to get I want to get this video out. I have to I got to well, edit it so out of some of the stuff. But I was going over the um, the IPOs. So here are the IPOs. I put them on the chart that are coming up. B I A B I A F A Q U F R Z A C H G E M C G. I believe that's uh, th them. Um, I'll be looking at them over the next couple of days doing my research, but just for you, if you want to get your early research on, these are the ones that have been moving. We talked about the big ones before, you know, that, that move, and also looking at brush. So those are a few for tomorrow. Well, I'd like to, uh, you know, get through the 830 um, number and, and really analyze and see where this market is. They're going to be, they're, they're going to line up the guests on TV and talk about the CPI and what it means and, you know, and we'll pretty much get a, a good feel f for things. I mean, I don't see this thing faking too many people out. Either it's going to go one direction or another. Um, and we have to wait probably to about, you know, 9 o'clock to really determine that. <laughs>